All right, I'm going to show you some differences between God's Word, the King James Bible, and the corrupt versions from the Vatican. A very easy test that you can see that they are false. Uh, if you want to watch my study I just put out here on the um, when will the new covenant come in, one I did a little bit before that on the difference between testament and covenant in the Bible, um, that'd be good. It goes through all the, you know, we go through all the scriptures and everything else talking about this covenant issue versus testament. But let me show you a way that you can easily tell that these new Bible versions are fake. Uh, they will tell you that they're just modern editions of the King James Bible. It's the same kind of a thing that they came up through and, and the King James and there was the revised version later on. And then, then we've come up through the ESV, the NIV, the NASV, all, all these different, you know, and so they're just updated King James Bibles. No, they're not. They're completely different Bibles. That's the truth of it. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. The New Testament is what Jesus Christ brought in with his death on the cross. You say, how do you know that? Go to Hebrews chapter 9 in the King James Bible. Vital, vital scripture here. And so Satan would want to destroy this. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15 through 17. And for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the First Testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. For a testament is a force after men are dead, otherwise it is of no strength at all while the testator liveth. Okay, Jesus Christ is the testator. He dies on the cross and the, cross and the New Testament comes in. The New Testament of his blood. Jesus didn't bring in the New Covenant. Again, the New Covenant is going to happen, I believe, with 144,000 in the time of Jacob's trouble, and specifically so into the Millennial Kingdom. That's when the New Covenant comes in. It didn't come in in the first century. Again, I've proved that in the other study on when will the New Covenant come in. You can watch that if you want the scriptures on that. But now let me show you how the new versions render that, render this, these two key passages. First, we have the NIV. This is the newest one, the 2011 edition. Right there, you can see NIV. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28 in the NIV says, you'll find it here. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. It's not the covenant. Jesus' blood didn't bring in the new covenant. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15 for this reason, Christ is the mediator of the new covenant, that those who are called may receive the promise, promised eternal inheritance now that he has died as a ransom to set them free from the sins committed under the first covenant. See how they lie? The New Testament is brought in by Jesus Christ, whereby both Jews and Gentiles can be one in Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection the blood that he shed on the cross, that's the New Testament. The New Covenant doesn't come in until God writes his law in the minds and the hearts of the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It's about the Jews. Why would the NIV change that? But let's use the uh, darling of the modern evangelical Christian world, the ESV. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. You can look these up. You can go to Bible Gateway and you can check these verses to make sure I'm telling you the truth. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. For this is my blood of the covenant. Change it, you know, and again, oh, it's archaic or something. It's not archaic. They're changing doctrine here. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. What do they say back in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15? Therefore, he is the mediator of a new covenant. Isn't that nice? Not the New Testament. No, it's the New Covenant. So that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance since a death that has occurred that redeems them from the transgressions committed under the first covenant. So again, they change what the King James Bible says. The King James Bible identifies the New Covenant in Hebrews chapter 8 and says that it's going to be coming there 
and you look at the timing of it and everything else, it's comparing Scripture with Scripture, it comes, fully comes in the Millennial Kingdom. But how about a St. Joseph edition Catholic book publishing company, New American Bible? Right there you can see it. Catholic. How about this one? What does this one say? Because these Bibles here, these are Protestant Bibles. Wink, wink, you know. Huh, sure, Protestant. This is a Catholic, a Roman Catholic Bible. S certainly it wouldn't say the same thing as the uh, Protestant Bible you know, updated Bibles there. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. For this is my blood, the blood of the covenant, to be poured out in behalf of many for the forgiveness of sins. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. This is why he is a mediator of a new covenant. Since his death has taken place for deliverance from transgressions committed under the first covenant, those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. So you can expect it from these guys. The Catholics believe in replacement theology. They believe that the church has basically taken Israel, they've taken away the Abrahamic covenant, so that the church is the one that has you know, holy sites in Jerusalem and in Israel, and, and so the, the church you know, is the one that's going to get the land in the Millennial Kingdom. And they take the Abrahamic covenant and then they take the Mosaic covenant as well. And they say, well, we have to get rid of that um, because we can't prove that that covenant that the Bible talks about in, in Jeremiah 31 and Hebrews chapter 8, where God's laws are written into their hearts and minds. We can't prove that for today because certainly Catholics don't live like that. But we'll just say um, we'll replace New Testament with New Covenant to make people think that what Jesus brought in was the new covenant which he gives to the church and therefore we get all the promises. You see how they do it? And isn't it weird that the new versions follow that same theme? This one's just for fun, actually. How about the message? Anybody that's using this is lost. They, I mean, I don't even need to ask you more questions. Are you using the message? Okay, you're lost. If you take this thing seriously. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. Um, taking the cup and thanking God he gave it to them uh, drink this all of you this is my blood God's new covenant poured out for many people for the forgiveness of sins okay well uh, it can't be the new covenant then because the new covenant is not poured out for many people you know this guy's an idiot it's Eugene Peterson that wrote this satanic piece of garbage here I mean it's the new covenants for many people. Uh, no, the new covenant is clearly in the King James Bible for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. The Bible warns about people that change the truth of God into a lie. I won't mention any names or anything. That's right, I already did. Oh well. <laughs> Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. This is so hard to understand too because it, it just kind of gives you basic verses over on the side here and you don't really where's it coming in at you know um christ cleans up our whole lives inside and out through the spirit christ offered himself as an unblemished sacrifice freeing us from all those dead effort dead end efforts to make ourselves respectable so that we can live all out for god uh Like a will that takes effect when someone dies, the new covenant was put into action at Jesus' death. So he actually says it right there. The new covenant was put into, into action at Jesus' death. Yeah. Now to be really interesting. Here we have a Hebrew-English New Testament, but yet it's kind of funny because it's called uh, New Covenant. New Covenant, and then, you know, it goes backwards, you know. So it starts with Matthew, and it goes back through to Revelation, you know. But uh, Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. So funny, look, look what they do here. Um, for, this is my blood, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So they call it the New Covenant, and yet they don't change the Scripture. So it's good that they don't change it, but 
kind of odd. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. Uh, for this cause he is the mediator of the New Testament, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions. All right, it goes on. I'm not going to turn to the next page, but it says New Testament. So they don't change the wording there, New Testament, but they call it the New Covenant. Uh, the New Covenant didn't come in yet. Just use a King James Bible. Any Anything else that has any kind of English to it or whatever else is just a massive confusion. Here you have the uh, New American Standard Version. Um, this is one that was just given out. I, I have other editions of it, but I just grabbed this one. But this is Upward Game Plan for Life, pentagram on the front there and all that good stuff. But this is the New American Standard Version. Uh, Matthew chapter 26, verse 28 says, For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for forgiveness of sins. Surprise, surprise. Oh, how surprising. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. For this he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that since a death has taken place for the redemption of the transgressions that were committed under the first covenant, those who have been called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. Again, totally destroying vital Bible doctrine, the New American Standard Version, which was used to be touted as the most accurate, best translation, and all this other stuff. Now they've kind of, a lot of them have abandoned it and gone with the English Standard Version. But here we have the uh, complete Jewish Bible. All right, let's see what this thing says. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. Uh, where are we at here? For this is my blood which ratifies the new covenant. My blood shed on behalf of many, so that many, so that they may have their sins forgiven. So they say new covenant. Totally lying. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. It is because of this death that he is mediator of the new of a new covenant or will. Because a death has occurred which sets people free from the transgressions committed under the first covenant, those who have been called may receive the promise, promised eternal inheritance. You start reading some of these new versions after a while, my tongue stops working correctly or something. It's weird. So again, you have this, uh, you know, if you're Jewish and you see this, you think, wow, you know, a uh, complete Jewish Bible. Wow, I can read about the New Testament and things in a Jewish-friendly version. Uh, no, you're getting a lie. You want a Jewish-friendly version, you get the King James Bible. <clears throat> a couple more here. We have... The uh, Green Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, um, forward by Desmond Tutu. That's important. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. For this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I think we're pretty much going to be able to figure out what they say over in Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. For this reason he is the mediator of a new covenant, so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance, because a death has occurred that remain, redeems them from the transgressions under the first covenant. I mean, we're all so surprised at that, I'm sure. You know, absurd. Here we have the Common English Bible. This was one that I showed years and years ago. This, when this thing came out, there were actually Jesuits uh, sitting on the translation committee. Matthew 26, verse 28. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many so that their sins may be forgiven. Covenant. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15. This is why he's the mediator of a new covenant, which is a will, <laughs> so that those who are called might receive the promise of the internal inheritance on the basis of his death. His death occurred to set them free from the offenses committed under the first covenant. Yeah. Finally, we'll look here at the uh, New King James Version. You can see it down there. And this is the MacArthur Study Bible. The great scholar John McBarfer. <clears throat> 
sarcastic for a reason. You'll see why here in a minute. Matthew chapter 26, verse 28. This is the New King James Version, okay? For this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And down on the footnote, old John here, he says, 26 verse 28, my blood of the new covenant. Covenants were ratified with the blood of a sacrifice, Genesis 8, 20, chapter 15, verse 9 and 10. Jesus' words here echo Moses' pronouncement in Exodus 24 verse 8. The blood of the new covenant is not an animal's blood, but Christ's own blood shed for the remission of sins. So he ties it back to the Mosaic covenant. It's exactly what he does. Jesus' death on the cross, the blood that he shed, did not bring in the new covenant. It brought in the New Testament. The new covenant comes in in the millennial kingdom. And partly into the time of Jacob's trouble with the 144,000 sealed Jews. The new covenant did not come in in the first century. Nobody, Jew, Gentile, nobody is walking around with God's laws written into their mind and into their heart and they're not sinning. Nobody can claim that. <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 9 verse 15. Let's see what the New King James Version says. And for this reason he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the eternal inheritance. So there you have it. All of these new versions, all of them that I read here today, all the big popular ones and some that might not be as popular as some of the others, but they all say new covenant or covenant they all lie. They all change the scriptures. Covenant is not the same as testament. Oh, but I have a dictionary and it says that they, compare the scriptures. Compare what's going on when Jesus brings with in the New Testament. In the New in, you know, Matthew, Mark, and Luke and John. You know, you can read about that. Look at the New Testament passages. Look at what the New Testament is all about. And then look at what the New Covenant is all about. They're different. You need to use the King James Bible. And you need to not listen to anybody that uses anything but a King James Bible. God's Holy Spirit will never tell anyone, anyone, to use anything other than this King James Bible. This is the greatest book that's ever been written in the English world. In fact, the world in general, but I'm saying the English world because I do believe that you can translate this into other languages and things. And again, if you are from another country, I know I have a lot of viewers from other countries, and you say, well, we don't have you know, uh, or, you know, I, I don't speak English as my primary language. Okay, then find whatever, you know, translation in your language and look through and see if it says covenant. And if it does, it's false. Simple. So that is going to be it. Just wanted to do this video quick to show you yet another proof that this is God's book right here, the King James Version. These other ones from the Vatican... They have satanic doctrines in them. A very, very false doctrine that the New Covenant came in in the first century. No, it didn't. The New Covenant is yet into the future. And it's to the house of Israel and the house of uh, Judah. I'm thinking Jacob for a minute. Judah. Okay? Thank you very much for watching.